upstairs this way. Hello there, I'm Muriel. And I'm Brian. Welcome to the channel. It was before we met, I was flying across the ocean on my concert tours, and Brian was sailing across it on his Grampian 30 sailboat. So now we're inviting you to join us. Yeah, come along as we go to some interesting places and work up Muriel's sailing skills to a point where she might consider a crossing. Maybe, maybe, and maybe work up Brian's musician skills, so maybe he'll join me on stage, or at least hanging out backstage with some of my cool musician friends. Oh, and she's got some friends. Grab a cup of coffee, grab your significant other, and join us for some great moments. When we last left you, we were playing with humpbacks, swatting flies, and seeing strange critters in the water as we entered this lovely harbor. Fortunately, it was a calm day because this harbor is completely open to the southwest. Well, time to row ashore and take a look around. We have made it. We have made it to Maine Yay. in, what, five, six days, I think? Yep, we have arrived. And you know what that means? For dinner, we are going out for lobster. Yes. <laughs> in the most beautiful, quaint village, right by the water. It is just spectacular. Yes, if you were a painter, you wouldn't need to go anywhere else. Everywhere you look, it's just, it's like painting. It's amazing. And speaking of paintings, I wanted to once again visit that spot that my great uncle, Junius Allen, had painted way back in 1941. Other artists have painted this scene too, and in fact, Monhegan has had a reputation as an artist colony going well back into the 1800s. Artists such as Jamie Wyeth and Edward Hopper have painted here also. This pastel may not measure up to my uncle's standards, but it was done by yours truly. As we continued walking, we found that painting wasn't the only art form practiced here. Done with our walkabout, we went looking for... Lobsters, this way. It was a simple dinner, but we so enjoyed it, sitting on a pair of Adirondack chairs in the sunshine right by the water. We got back from dinner and discovered we had dragged a bit, so we decided to move to the backside and take a mooring. What a fantastic voyage we had. My first crossing is so exciting. And the first thing that happened is we saw humpback whales. I don't think real sailors would call that a crossing. <laughs> well, uh, for me it was a crossing. You know, it was overnight. Uh, we uh, lost sight of land for a long period of time. <laughs> Not bad for a kid from Nashville. Yeah, so for me, that was, that was special, you know? That, we were sailing. Did you, you get know? your badge? Yes, the first, the first little crossing, okay. There you go. 
There's a famous line you probably know from Kenneth Graham's classic, The Wind in the Willows, that goes like this. Believe me, my young friend, there is nothing, absolutely nothing, half so much worth doing as simply messing about in boats. For me, the manifestation of that quote is a small project that is completely optional, fun, and also results in some improvement in the boat's functionality or looks. I got to fuss with just such a project here before we set off for our next destination. So I've got four cockpit cushions out here in the uh, cockpit and uh, one of them unfortunately blew away in a kind of a storm so I'm replacing it. We decided to stop at the beautiful Muscle Ridge chain of islands and chose the southern end of Pleasant Island as our destination. This dead seal was our first indication that there may be sharks around. And the lobster pots begin innocently enough, just a few here and there. After that seal, it was nice to see a little bit of life on board. The wind just frustratingly up and quit in the middle of the day and suddenly we and everyone around us was motoring, but uh, as we were almost there, it was okay. Okay, we're rowing away from Hedwisset towards this beautiful main shore. Frolicking those rocks for Another favorite thing of mine is to work on a dinghy in some remote beach or a place. And uh, like before, better if the project is completely optional and fun. All sorts of driftwood and buoys up in here. I put the stern anchor out to keep our bow into the swells and did so just before the clouds opened up. I just love it when I'm anchored someplace nice and it rains. Taking a nap below while the rain drums on the coach roof is just heaven. And I was thinking I should put this camera down and do just that but I waited too long. Brian, are you seeing this? So, this little piece here, which is on the traveler for the main sheet, you know, this little piece broke off that was trapping this pin 
you know, in here. So that pin is now free on this side and levering on that side. So until we find a welder, I have to figure out something. And the best I can do is um, put a hose clamp around this whole mess and trap it in place. And that actually fits pretty nicely. How much it's going to hold, I don't know. Goodbye. Okay. I don't know how to control this thing. <laughs> Headed for Oz. On voyage. <laughs> I'll miss you most of all, Scarecrow. <laughs> Well, looking over Brian's shoulder, you can just barely make out there's a house there. And you know, I thought it was an uninhabited beach, but it's really cool. There's actually two houses, and they've so tastefully tucked them behind the trees that we left a little note just telling them how much we appreciated the way they built their homes into the landscape. Well, Captain Brian was looking a little shaggy there. Oh, like alfalfa. <laughs> I think you need to wash your hair now. <laughs> well, after that four-deck haircut, we weighed anchor and sailed up around Owl's Head and into Rockland. Quite the sailorly pose you've got going there. Well, gotta watch out for those lobster pots. I'll check this side. She's working it. We left Long Island without any contacts in this part of Maine. But good friend and former student of Muriel's, Bob Peterson, a guy who only ever asked her to teach him Gordon Bach tunes, suggested we reach out to a luthier named Nikos Apollonia. Nick arranged for us to use a privately owned spot on the main dock of the Sail Power and Steam Museum in Rockland. The spot was open because the owner was out cruising in his houseboat, and that owner is none other than Gordon Bach. Well, Nick, as it turns out, builds some really interesting and unusually shaped instruments. So I was really intrigued about these and wondered what they sounded like. And he invited us to his home for dinner in Rockport, which is just north of Rockland, where we are now. From this one phone number, we had no idea that we would have so many interesting experiences. And this is one that is on brought back from the Hebrides in Scotland. This is for Pamela, and it's called Lady Pamela. played before dinner and after dinner and late into the night sitting on that screened in porch doing all manner of folk songs and sailor shanties. It reminded me of my days at the Old Town School of Folk Music as a teenager. 
and finding that joy of playing music with other people. Uh, in fact, it was the first time I've sat down really playing music with another human being since the pandemic, really, since the, the beginning of that, uh, way back the end of February. Wow. So, uh, special time for me. Thanks for watching, and please hit the like and subscribe buttons and ring that bell so you'll know when future episodes are coming out. In the next one, we channel our best Blackbeard the Pirate and Commandeer, the famous windjammer, the Stephen Tabor. We'll try to find a place to hide from Hurricane Isaias. And we are given an exclusive invite to the Sweet Chariot Music Festival.